Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Emerged this weekend that Labour plans to put Jeremy Corbyn more in the public eye next year with more frequent appearances on television in an effort to boost the party's ratings in the polls and address the new populism. But on the big questions for the party, immigration and Brexit, there still seem to be, well, not too many answers. Let's try and get some now with Diane Abbott, the Shadow Home Secretary. And a very good morning and a Merry Christmas to you, Diane Abbott. Uh, interesting, we ended our news bulletin there with a picture of Her Majesty the Queen. You're going to be meeting her soon soon to be sworn in as a privy councillor and are you, you're going to take that oath to be a I true and faithful servant i couldn't possibly comment i couldn't possibly comment and you know that so but it's normal for someone in your position on the front bench to to be elected to the privy council is not if you were you're going to have to you're going to have to say you're going to be a loyal and faithful servant is that something you would say with your fingers crossed the proceedings of the Privy Council are meant to be private so I can't comment on whether I'm going to join well, it and I can't comment well, on what I do. Well they're private if you go to it. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gone to it yet. So, I, mean, but, so I can't comment either way. But I mean you're not in favour, overall you're not in favour of the UK having a monarchy. I mean you've talked in the past about abolishing it. I think you'll find that was if I did say that was 30 years ago, mm. I'm in favour of having a monarchy. The British people have huge respect for the Queen and I'm in favour of having a monarchy. OK, well, I also want to ask you, well, we're talking about oaths here then. Uh, what about this uh, discussion this morning we're reading in the papers, this uh, oath for civil servants and others to uphold British values, the suggestion from Sajid Javid to, to address the problems, and we've all talked in the past, haven't we, about the problems of integration. Would this be part of the solution in your view? I'm not sure it'll do anything to deal with the question of integration or the question of... Um, radicalism. However, if the Tories really want people to swear an oath, why don't they? Part of the oath that's being suggested is about upholding the legal system and respect for the law. So why don't they get some newspaper proprietors to swear that oath? Because we've seen terrible coverage in the papers where they claim that judges are enemy of the people. Maybe if newspaper proprietors swore an oath to uphold the law, we wouldn't see those ridiculous front pages. It's rather a, a strange conjunction there you've made. I mean, you know, that, that, that is an issue that's much discussed, but I can't see it making uh, much difference whether uh, newspaper proprietors swore oaths about their coverage. But this issue of... But you think it'll make a difference if other people swear? I'm asking you if you think it would make a difference. I have nothing against it in principle, but it will not make a difference for the problems of radicalisation or integration. But the problems there, I mean, you will identify the problems of people who come to this country, who live in this country, who were born in this country, who actually feel that uh, many of the institutions and the values of Britain do not apply to them, or they want to destroy them. I don't meet many people like that. I have a very diverse population in Hackney, Muslims, West Indians, uh, people from Turkey. They're, they're, they're living in London and they're living in this country because they value what this country has to offer and they respect its institutions, particularly people who originate from the Commonwealth. So I don't think the oath will make any verifiable difference. Tell me about this uh, idea of repackaging Jeremy Corbyn. Isn't part of his uh, his appeal uh, to those he appeals to? Isn't part of his appeal that he's he's not packaged? That he he's his own man. He is what he is. No one's talking about packaging him, but I think he probably will be out in the media more in the coming year. Because what we find is that when Jeremy is actually on the radio, on television, actually he can relate to people and it encourages people to relate to what he's saying. Mm. This, this idea of, of, of populism, I just had a panel discussion in the last hour looking at international affairs and uh, some of my commentators there saying, well, the thing about populism is that it doesn't necessarily have to appeal to the right. Is, is that Labour's calculation? Yes. I mean, one of the most populist American president was FDR Roosevelt and he was very much in an American context on the left so populism isn't just about the right it's about people feeling that you understand their problems and it's about mm. people feeling they can actually relate to you and we think we can do that on the left as but well. Don't you and Jeremy Corbyn you talk about people feeling you understand their problems if anything the Brexit vote told us was that people have big concerns about the impact of immigration on their communities. And you and Jeremy Corbyn are on the record as saying you, you, you don't see the need for any substantial controls. 
people are very concerned about the impact of immigration on their communities. That's why the Labour Party is calling for a migration impact fund to deal with issues around schools and housing. And in particular, we want to crack down on employers who are exploiting immigrants by beefing up the factories inspectorate, by enforcement of the minimum wage, by doing away with uh, exploitative zero-hours contracts. So we take those things extremely seriously. But it does no good to scapegoat immigrants. Mm. But no restriction of numbers there. You said it, you will have a mitigation fund, you will put more money into areas where there are high levels of immigration and impact on public services, but still that free movement, certainly within the European Union or whatever relationship we have with the European Union. Well, on the question of free movement, um, nobody um, is supports free movement, but it is a fact that in the EU, Free movement is one of the four pillars. It's part of the treaty. It's seen as indivisible and non-negotiable. And if we want to stay inside the single market for the benefit of the economy, there's probably going to have to be some trade-off of freedom of movement. So you would endorse, I mean, you were there, of course. Uh, I was too, for Jeremy Corbyn's speech to the Labour Party conference in Liverpool in September when he addressed immigration head-on. And uh, just before it, uh, one of his spokespeople was, was asked to be explicit about it. Uh, are you relaxed about numbers? They said, yes, it's uh, not our objective to reduce numbers. We are relaxed about numbers going up. That, that's the position. That was a spokesperson. You have never heard Jeremy say that because it's not his view. What we believe is if we bear down on exploitation, we will bear down on levels of migration. But setting numerical targets has not worked. The Tories have done it for six years mm. now and immigration is at record levels. We want to deal with the underlying issues in communities. But you want to see the economy keep growing. If the economy keeps growing, it's going to attract more people here. You therefore would be relaxed about the numbers going up if that were the case, if that were the cause? Well, one reason why immigrants have come here in the past is because some British workers don't have the right skills. We're really committed to putting money into education and skills training and that's another way you bear down on the numbers of immigrants. But as I say, we shouldn't be scapegoating immigrants. But it is a party problem, isn't it? Because we hear from other members, prominent members of your party, the likes of Hillary, Ben, Keir Starmer, Andy Burnham, the list goes on, that's saying, well, yes, we, we do have to do something about the numbers. Of course we're going to do something about the numbers and we're going to do it by the sort of skills training which will mean employers won't have to bring so many immigrants in and by bearing down on the other end of the scale on exploitation which again should bear down on numbers. Nobody takes the issues around people's concerns that led them to vote for Brexit lightly. We, so we're just seeking to address them in a way that will work. So would you endorse, I mean, it was Gordon Brown formulated it, wasn't it? British jobs for British workers. This, this is your ambition, that's what that you're was, saying. That was, that was Gordon Brown, this is mm. me. I'm saying that we have to put the economy and jobs and our standard of living first, that we won't scapegoat immigrants. In fact, we think Theresa May should guarantee the position of EU migrants who are currently here. We we want what's good for Britain, good for the economy, but we're not about scapegoating people and blaming immigrants for the failures of Tory policy on health and housing. All right. Do you think the current number of strikes are good for, good for Britain and good for the economy? We haven't heard much from the, the Labour front bench about the disruption that's been called in, caused in this, this run-up to Christmas by the rail strikes, ones on the, some airlines, the postal workers. Would you like to say, well, perhaps you ought to think about the, the public you serve? Of course we think about the public we serve and of course these strikes are going to be very disastrous if they all go ahead for the public over Christmas time but people do have a legal right to strike. It's not my role to second guess decisions of trade union leadership but in relation to Southern in particular, Southern has been a catastrophe. We need to take that franchise away from Southern and give it to the Mayor of London. OK, I just want to play to you, I talked to the uh, Chair of the Public Accounts Committee, your, your colleague in the party, Meg Hillier, and, and this is what she had to say about the, about the strikes.
I think it's absolutely right, people should have the right to strike, but I think it is a very unfortunate combination for, for people travelling, workers, at a particularly difficult time of year. And I think that all trade unions, even though they're fighting for their rights, need to really think about the impact on the people they're actually there to serve, their customers uh, or their passengers. And I think that, that needs to, there needs to be a bit of a wake-up call about the impact on hard-working people who are trying to get to work or go on holiday. Uh, and I think that, the, if not careful, they could be shooting themselves in the foot shooting themselves in the foot, Diane Abbott, discuss. Meg is a well-loved colleague in Hackney. I agree with what she said, but it's a really unfortunate situation. But I'm not going to be second-guessing the leadership of trade unions. And we need to remember it takes two to cause a strike. It's not just the trade union, it's also the problems and the incompetence of some management. And Southern is an example of that, Southern Rail. I mean, but do you not think some that there's an agenda beyond protecting the rights of workers from some of these union leaders who have talked, have they not, and you be, be aware of them, have talked about using it as a, using strikes as a political weapon? Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, the, the disputes we are looking at are genuine industrial disputes, and trade union leadership is entitled to take their strategy forward in the way they think is appropriate, and we hope that some of these strikes won't happen. So what would you say uh, to the government? Uh, we're hearing calls from Conservative MPs. Some Conservative MPs say, well, you need new laws to come in here, in here to, to restrict these rights to no, strike. No, I would be opposed to restricting people's right to strike. There we are. Shadow Home Secretary, thank you very much indeed. Diane Abbott uh, maybe will be becoming a member of the Privy Council, but can't tell us. We'll find <laughs> out. Very good to see you, Diane Abbott. Uh,